En dan komen we hier bij de slaapkamer. Oh, ja. Met... The kitchen, eh? Yes. And here I want a walk-in fridge. You know? Ah! Yes. So you like kitchen? Yes. Okay. Walk-in fridge. <laughs> Welcome to Tashkent 2014, one of the preliminary tournaments leading up to the candidates final for the World Championship Challenger. It's in a series, a FIDE Grand Prix series. Uh, a lot of great players in here, but especially for me is my buddy Carl Nakamura is in it. And I hope Carl does well. Anyway, folks, FIDE Grand Prix series, Tashkent 2014. Games coming up. Here are the standings after 10 rounds in the current leg of the FIDE Grand Prix from Tashkent. Andrekin from Russia in first place with six and a half. And my buddy, Carl Nakamura from the U.S. and Mama Jeroff with six. Vashay Lagrav and Joe Bava with five and a half. Rajabov, Karyakin, and Karawana with five points. Yakovenko and Geary with four and a half. Kajman Janoff with three and a half, and poor Boris Gelfand, last place with three points. Those are the standings after ten rounds. One more round to go. Hi, folks. John Cordisco back again. Game from round ten of the current leg of the FIDE Grand Prix Series. This one from Tashkent, 2014. Between U.S. chess hopeful Carl Nakamura, my buddy from the U.S., of course, and a Yakovenko is black. Let's get right to it. Nakamura is white. Yakovenko is black. Uh, it's going to be a Lasker's defense. Now, I was reading up a little bit. Some people, they were reviewing this game, and they find this Lasker's defense very solid. So we'll see how this works out. It's a Queen's game with decline, but it's a Lasker defense. I kind of like it. It's simple. It's it's old school chess. There's not a lot of theory in it. And I think sometimes we just need to get away from that. These guys need to get away from that 30-35 move, ran it through the computer preparation stuff. Maybe this is where I should interject. I, I'm a big fan of, of uh, Fisher Random or Chess 960, whatever you want to call it. I wish it catches on. I think it makes a lot for a lot more exciting chess. E3. Knight, bishop takes, queen takes, pawn takes, knight takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop d3. And of course, white kept his good bishop, as they say, because the center pawns are on dark squares. But uh, on the computer, it's third of a pawn advantage for white, which is basically even. Um, see how this goes? c5. Try to go right after white center immediately. Castles. Knight c6. Of course, we know white won't take. Because after queen takes, this and this pawn are isolated. Well, this one already is here, but this pawn will be isolated the c pawn. And who wants that? Rook d1. Bishop e6. e4. Now, which one do you take? You take the d pawn, of course. Bishop takes, C finally takes, Bishop takes, Pawn takes, Knight takes. Now here we are, Knight against the Bishop. They both have isolated C and A pawns, and they both have three pawns in front of their King. I and mean, this is like Dolesville, sorry. You know, I maybe it's the, the Lasker defense that's it's a little dry. And uh, I think Carl 
probably want a little bit better as white. It just couldn't. He just couldn't do it with the with the with the opening that black defended himself with. Queen to c5. Get that pin right off of that bishop. Knight takes. Pawn takes. Rook e3. Now the computer only has a tiny advantage. Now it shows even for for uh, both sides. And with those two isolated pawns that Black has, I'm really surprised. Now, what the move that the computer likes for Black here is Rook takes F2. But Carl decided to go Rook to F6. Now, if he had decided Rook to F2 instead, King takes, Rook checks, King E2, Queen B5 check, Rook D3, Queen checks, Rook E3 check, and so on and so on. And that would cause a draw. Sacrificing that rook would cause a draw. But after rook to f6, I think her, black wants to double up on the f file. Queen e2. Rook a, f8, of course. And now he brings the other rook to here. Now, I know f3 would have been really hard, especially with that pin on the rook. But he decided to go rook to f1 instead. King h8, g3, give an escape for his king, rook to d8, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes, queen takes, queen e7. Half a point, half a pawn advantage maybe for white, but there's not much here, to be honest with you. We're going to have to see how this goes. It looks awful drawish right now. Try to put a little enthusiasm in this game here, but let's tell you the truth. It's late at night here in the United States, and I'm doing this video, and maybe I'm a little tired, but it's this is just Dullsville. Queen of D4, protect the rook. Rook over, going after the C-pawn. Rook to B8. Queen F7. Now, if rook had taken that pawn, those of you that thought that was a free pawn, after rook checks, king to G2, queen D5, you lose the rook, and then f8, f5, g6, and that's it. You're through. White loses. So that pawn wasn't free. a5, queen f5, queen to d2. This looks like they're going after each other's rook. Rook to c2, queen to d1 check. King to g2, and you can see this coming already. Rook to b1. Queen f8 check. And so on. And so on. And on. And here we go back and forth. And that's where they decided to draw it. Kind of uneventful. I thought this game would knock his white. With only one more round after this. And he would try to push the envelope a little bit. But I guess that the last crew defense for that setup is just a little too tough. Anyway, folks, that's... A game from round 10 of the current leg in the FIDE Grand Prix series. This one in Tyscott. I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, folks, I want you all to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard.
Look at that. That's beautiful. It's got to be one of the most proud moments of my life, I guarantee you.